Hey there, you're watching a new episode of Conversations with Claudia and today is such a treat for you because we're going to have a very real conversation about life and about business. So stay tuned because this conversation is for you and we will have some adult language in this conversation so in case you have your little ones around, grab your headphones now. A lot of people are identifying Maya Barra, my guest from today, as the CEO and founder of Maya Luxurious Tea, but she is also the president of LHBMM Holdings, holdings which hold together 12 companies across the world, and she is also the co-owner of Hugo Winery. Let's get to know Maya. Maya Barra is the CEO and founder of Maya Luxurious Tea, the co-owner of Hugo Winery, and the vice president of LHBMM Holdings. She's an active businesswoman, always developing new projects while inspiring others to do the same. From former professional ballroom dancer as a child, singer, to lawyer, to entrepreneurship, to wife, mom, friend, and everything in between, she is a force of nature that never stops building and evolving. While she's an avid traveler, spending her time on three different continents, she's a true definition of grounded. But mostly, she's very passionate about sports cars, racing, fashion, and all-around positive living. Maya guides her life by the law of attraction and embraces Buddhism as her religion. But one thing is for sure, there's nothing that she cannot do and there's nothing stopping her. Maya, thank you so much for being here with me today. It is my pleasure to have you with me. We planned this for so long and finally we are here and we are doing this. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. I, I was, you know, waiting to have a real conversation with you for so long. So it's just a treat for both of us. Yes, it is. Well, finally, we can have this in the digital space, in the digital space, because we actually do have a lot of very real conversations in our private life. So we I do. very much love that about us. But before we're going to jump in this conversation, I have a special section of 21 very fiery questions. Oh my God, here we so, go. So yeah, I need very fast answers. So yeah, just get ready and um, let's get started. What is your morning routine? Oh my God, I meditate, brush my teeth, and then go on with my routine, cooking breakfast for my husband and my kids, um, gym, uh, emails, and then I start my day. All right, for me, that sounds like a whole day of work, but all right, let's, yeah. let's leave it like that. Housewife or businesswoman? Both. Mm. Both because um, for me, it's really important to have a mix of everything. I get bored being a housewife, but I get bored uh, being just a businesswoman. So I, I'd rather have everything. What drives you the most crazy? Oof, a lot of things. I'm a Virgo, so I'm very OCD about stuff. I like everything to be clean. Um, I'm, you know, I like people to eat, drink nicely. Um, I like everything to be neat. Um, I love discipline. I love to have fun, but have boundaries. So yeah, a, a lot of things drive me crazy, but I meditate a lot and I always try to stay as positive as, as I can. The fourth question is something different. How does it feel to drive a Lamborghini? Um, I'll tell you how it's to, to drive your dream cars. So mm. it doesn't mean if it's a Lamborghini, if it's a Ferrari, a Maserati, what, I don't know, whatever that is. Driving your dream car, it's powerful because that means you achieved mm. your dream. Like, uh, your dream doesn't have to be the biggest dream in the world. If you dream on, you know, driving a car because you love cars, you're a sports person, uh, you love, you love um, high speed and stuff like that, and that's your dream, that's totally fine. Um, I wanted a Lamborghini since I was a child. So when I got it, I was really excited. I'm still, that's something that, you know, drives me crazy. I'm still excited to drive my Lamborghini and I'm pretty sure I will always be fascinated about, you know, sports cars. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful car, 
but it's not the fact that it's a beautiful car. It's the fact that I want it. I wanted that car. I got that car and now I love that car and I appreciate that car. I still appreciate it. I love that. Yeah. Um, and it also keeps me very down to earth right. because I know exactly what I had to, to do, go through, work um, to get there. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's not a car. For me, it's just a point where I just knew that I made it. You know, I, I, my, my dreams made it, so, yeah. I think you made a very good point, and even though we're into fire questions, I, I just have to acknowledge you for that. It's not about driving the car, but it's about driving the dream. It's like yes. you achieve the dream, and that is a whole new level, so yeah. I really like that answer. And you know, and it, it yeah. doesn't matter what your dream is. Yeah, so it, yeah, it, It's yeah, your exactly. dream, it's very exactly. personal. It's yes, very personal. Yes. You have so to it's own like it. like structure. Yeah, and, yeah. and then don't forget where you came from. Mm -hmm. You know, try yeah. to be focused on where you where where you were and where you are now. Yeah, Maya, do you ever get lazy days? Not really. I I would you know I I want to say I do, but I don't. Um, and I don't get lazy days because now I have two kids, and no matter what you want to do, you have to do what you have to do. So you have to wake up in the morning. One is crying. One is running you know mm -hmm. uh, you have to do stuff so I have a husband I have a family we are a lot of people I have businesses I don't get get lazy lazy for me is maybe sleeping until 8 o'clock in the morning is like wow did I sleep until 8 o'clock in the morning I'm like yes this is oh, my wow. you know amazing I, I love to sleep I love to have my time but it's 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 very hard when you have so many people around you and you know so many things going on it's it's kind of hard what is the most used word in your vocabulary nowadays i don't think i can say that word you can we can dip it <laughs> um you don't have to yeah, no. Uh, I All use right. a lot of words, but my <laughs> words nowadays are, you know, I, well, I start in the morning with thank you, God. So Beautiful. let's say that. Well, well, I think that's the most used word nowadays because mm -hmm. every single morning and couple of, you know, moments in the day, I, you know, I thank the universe um, because I was uh, raised um, Orthodox, but, you know, I'm, I'm a Buddhist at heart. So I say, I thank the universe all the time and probably that's the most used word, thank you universe, but then a lot of bad words because during the day a lot of things happen and you know, I have to chill somehow and that helps me focus and chill a little bit, you know, just like a little swear word and then I'm like, I'm fine again, <laughs> I'm positive again. All right. What is the best part in being a mom? Oh, the unconditional love, man, you know, you wake up in the morning and you know that person and you know these people who are your kids different people that you know are out there in the world with different personalities with you know different different characters they will love you no matter what like no matter what you do no matter what you say no matter how you look no matter who you are they will love you unconditional and unconditional love is extremely hard um, I honestly think that you cannot love unconditionally a stranger. Um, mm. I think it's related, it's, 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 a, it's a thing about blood, in my vision. You can only love someone if you have the same blood, like someone in your family, unconditional. Because you love other people, but you also put conditions. I love you if you do this. I love you if you're not doing this. I love you if you behave like this. And that's conditioned by, you know, third things. So I think the only pure love is, you know, around you and your kids and your family. Right. Diamonds or pearls? Cars. I love that. All cars. Right, cars. I love All diamonds, right. but I can live without diamonds. Um, you know, I get bored easily. So, right. yeah, right. definitely cars. Your favorite place on earth? Whatever my heart is. Where my people are, 
my heart is there, I'll go anywhere. I don't have a favorite place. I, have, I travel around the world. My favorite place is just where my heart is. That's it. I felt that. I did. Do you see yourself in politics? No. At all? At all. At all. Okay. Tell me if you have a hidden talent. I'm sure you do, but tell me one. People say I can sing. You can. You can. <laughs> uh, I can definitely dance. That's something that I, I, I know I can. I can dance. People say I can sing. Um, I'm double jointed. I can do a lot of splits and, you know, gymnastics and, and stuff. I believe that. Once I tried to do a move that I saw <laughs> that you did and I almost broke my back. So you're definitely extremely You flexible. just need to exercise. <laughs> That's it. Would you ever go on Mars? Yeah, I would. Why not? And you would start your own company there too. Definitely, <laughs> yes. And probably a trend or something. I totally get that. Um, what is the most important thing um, you want for your kids to know? So what, what, what is your legacy for your children? What do you want to leave behind? I want my kids to know they are loved, no matter what. This is something that I just want them to know. It, I, it doesn't matter if I'm there with them, if anyone is there with them, they need to know they are loved by the universe, by everything, you know, they are into this planet because they were loved right. and they need to focus on whoever they are as, you know, real people, souls, because we are souls. We, this is just like a small experience that we have on this earth. It's just right. something that one day will be like, boom, nothing will ever be there again, you know, and our physical experience will be nothing. But our soul, and I, I do believe in re reincarnation and, and everything, I do believe our soul is like amazing. It's like something you cannot explain. Our soul will live forever. So. so then if you brought this into conversation, can I ask you, do you, what do you think that you were in your previous life? I don't know what I was, but I definitely had some trauma because I was born into this life knowing some things and already feeling um, a lot of things that made me who I am uh, mm -hmm. at a very young age. Um, I, I can say I was pretty mature, um, you know, when I was a teenager. So I, I definitely probably was a human in, in, a, in another life. So um, I was already, you know, having information in my head, already had feelings about a lot of things. What is your number one rule for success? Who rules. Uh, rules are there to be, you know. <laughs> um, I think you have to be passionate. I think you have to be passionate about everything in life, not only your business. If you don't believe in something that you're selling, it's just impossible for other people to love that thing. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're selling a fork or if you're selling a company or whatever that is. If you're not passionate and you don't believe in your product, mm -hmm. um, you will. I, I don't think you will succeed because you cannot talk about it with passion. You don't. You know. You don't feel anything when talking about your business and your product. If you're plain Jane and you're not, you know, not feeling anything about whatever you're selling. Uh, I think it's in, just in vain. Right. So I think passion. Passion, passion in your everything mind. you do. Passion, passion in your business, passion in your love life, passion in everything. That will will drive you, will you will make you make you feel things, make you want new things, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Passion is the word. Do you have a beauty philosophy? What's your beauty philosophy? If you're ugly inside, you will definitely be ugly outside. That's, I, I think, I was just thinking right now because I never thought about this. I definitely think if you have a, an ugly personality, mm -hmm. uh, that, that will say a lot of you. And, um, no matter how hard you will try to look good and, you know, make people think you're beautiful, you will still, your vibe will show something else. What is one thing that you cannot live without? Love. Beautiful. Spontaneous or prepared? Both. Hmm. Both. Uh, a lot of times I'm very spontaneous, but 
I'm also very well prepared when I have to. So both words. Right. Do you believe in the law of attraction? It's my guidance in life. You attract absolutely everything. You definitely attract absolutely everything. I 100% believe in the law of attraction and manifestation of everything. Complete the sentence for me. The future looks like... Female. Yay! I like that! How does it feel to be married with such a successful man? Hard. Um, a lot of people think that um, being married to a smart guy, you know, success comes with brains, usually. Um, a lot of people think it's very easy to be married to a successful guy, you have everything. No, it's not a bonus, it's hard work. They already know what they want, they already have high standards. Of course, I do have high standards as well, that's why I married a smart guy. But at the same time, you know, being a female, you have to do everything. You're a mother, you're a sister, you're a daughter, you're everything. And then you're a wife, you're a businesswoman, and you do absolutely everything. Um, it's hard. It's hard. So our 21 questions are now complete and we will get to the conversation with Maya. And I think I will want to start this conversation by asking you, Maya, how did you start doing your own thing? Because you are a little bit all over the place. You're present for so many things, for so many companies. You're currently on multiple chairs all over the world. And maybe it's not so usual or the society perceives it as not being so usual for a smart, beautiful woman. So how did you start your own thing? I started with passion, as I, I told you before. Um, I just graduated law school and with A+, plus. but um, practice with theory is not the same thing. So when I started to practice everything, I realized that it's not for me. Um, it, doesn't make me it doesn't make me happy. So my parents said, if it doesn't make you happy, then you need to try something else. So that's how I started to work with um, my, my husband and his company. And then we were consumers in, of green tea and I just wanted to change the packaging and you know just for ourselves I wanted to change the packaging I, I wanted to bring more teas into the company just to have for ourselves and our customers and everything mm -hmm. and then I did I just created packagings in my spare time and um, you know bringing more tea into our company just to have for ourselves and then my husband was like this is like this looks really really good like everyone is asking me what tea is this? Like, you know, the packaging and everything, you should do your own business. Right. Why not start something, you know, by myself? It was outside of the company. So mm -hmm. I was still working absolutely everything in the company and then on the side, just starting my own business, um, yeah. a tea company. Yeah. And this uh, takes me back to the question spontaneous or prepared where you said both. Yeah. And this is the proof of it. You were prepared, but you started the company very spontaneously. Exactly. So there we go. I started Beautiful. as a passion, but I also prepared myself and learned right. about everything so I can start the company. It's hard work and uh, you were extremely spontaneous about it. And It's hard work, but it makes you feel alive. It like does. If you wake up in the morning and you know I want to do a new thing, I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to accomplish this and you you feel alive you feel that you, you have you know reasons yeah. to to leave another day and to do other things and life is you know precious so yeah right but what was the most challenging part that you had going through that process everything was very challenging because it was the start of something that i never went through um it was a new company for me it was tea was a new thing for me Mm -hmm. uh, packaging was a new thing, uh, being a, a very young woman, I was 23, so being a very young woman was very new for me in mm -hmm. business. Um, also people tend to not take you very, you know, on a serious note. They think you're young, you're cute, and that's about it. And then when you start to talk, they like, they step aside a little bit and are like, oops, she knows what she's talking about. 
but it, you, you need a lot of work. You need a lot of work to, to put in a lot of work for even people to take you seriously. So Sure. I think that's a challenge too. I think it's a challenge in general for people to, to learn how to be seen and heard. And definitely when you take something, a product like you did, you took a product out in the world, you definitely had to, to learn how to be visible from that perspective as well. And that's hard work too. Yeah, I just don't think it's fair because you're a woman, you know, uh, they tend not to take you seriously. Uh, I think when you start to speak, they should listen to you as they listen to a, a man. Uh, but that's another, you know, discussion and I don't want to get there. But sure. uh, definitely I want this to be um, a normal thing in the future. Listening to a girl or a mm -hmm. female no matter what she has to say, with the same interest and the same focus as you listen right. to uh, a man. Did you, did you have any mentors on the way or did your family support you in any way? My family always, uh, you know, supported me no matter what I wanted to do, but they support me on the level that they say, okay, um, we trust you, you can do whatever you want. Because right. I always had a very... Um, strong personality and it was mm -hmm. very hard for anyone around me to stop me from doing things. Um, I learned a lot of things from my husband as well. I will say that he's an extremely uh, well-known and extremely good business business person uh, and I had, a, I had a lot of things to, to learn from him, definitely. Probably passively as well, direct and indirect as well. Yes. Just being around a very successful person. Just being person. around. 99% yeah. being around because he didn't have the time to explain anything to me. I yeah. just, you know, went around him and I was with so, him all the time. And then I just took everything that I could from, okay. from everyone around me. I learned from everyone. But you see, that is also your capacity of doing that because going back to strong women and you know the definition of success, you have to be a very strong woman to 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 learn all these things about business passively. So I think you have to be very open to learn. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of people who say I know everything. I, mm -hmm. I swear to God, I'm very afraid of those people. If someone tells you I I know this, I know that, I know absolutely everything. I'm really afraid because those people can do bad stuff in the world <laughs> without knowing what they're doing. So no, I think you have to be extremely open to learn something every second of your life. You wake up in the morning, you learn something new from the sky, from the plants, from your kids, from your family, for absolutely everyone around you. They all have to bring something to the table and they will if you focus on seeing those things yeah I think I had a previous conversation with someone that is just writing a book about this about the power of silence how much you can actually learn just by let the information sink in so it goes back to what you just shared and yeah yeah I love that you can hear a different perspective you know all the time when you are when you are open so definitely there's a lot of space in there of course, and you can take whatever suits you, you know, whatever you want. Okay, I don't think this is in alignment with what I think, with my vision in life. Mm -hmm. But you can still listen to people and then take whatever you feel it's comfortable for you right. and, you know, helps you in life. Yeah. But it takes a lot of balls right. to be silent and learn. Mm -hmm. Understand that we all have to learn a lot of things. We know, we know nothing. We know absolutely nothing. Going back to your 23 beautiful years old when you started a company while the society would claim you know you're 23 you have to get married you have to have children. How did you deal with that? I didn't deal with it. Mm -hmm. I just told my parents since I was I think 16 I think Mm -hmm. um, I told my parents and my whole family because I have a big family and we are, we are extremely close. Um, whenever they were talking about marriage, kids, blah, blah, I said, look, don't look at me. I will never get married and I will never have kids. Wow. 
I told this, I told them this from the beginning, so then nobody would ever pressure me because they already knew. Mm -hmm. I will never have kids, never get married. Ooh, you had a strategy in there. I don't think so. It, then yeah. it was just something that I felt. Right. And I, I, I'm very used to say whatever I think. Mm -hmm. That's not a boat. That's not a plus. It's a minus. But you know, I'm still working on it, and like everyone is working on everything. I'm still working on being silent and not say whatever crosses my mind because no, you should not do that. But I was used to you know to saying whatever. I'm like no, I'm not having kids. No, I don't want to get married. No, I'm not going to do this. No, I'm not going to settle for I don't know what. So. My family already knew, so they, mm -hmm. they didn't pressure me. Right. I think everyone was um, out of their minds when I, when I said that I will get married. And when I said that I will have kids, everyone was like, Whoa, I thought you said something else. Right. Like, <laughs> but it was yeah, fine. It was, it was fine. fine. It was the right decision for me. Um, I always listened to my instincts. So if I felt that this is the man that I want to, you mm -hmm. know, build the family with and uh, grow together, um, I, I felt it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love it to this day. We are, we are together for 10 years. So I still feel he's the, the right man for me. He's the right man. So you felt it from the very beginning. Yes, it's, I did. Yeah, it's beautiful. I did. I did because he was a smart guy and um, he was the person that I, I, I could find things in common with. We could talk about things. He would understand more than, oh, let's, you know, get some drinks together. Let's, you know, do this and do that. I could talk real life with him. Mm -hmm. We could cry together. We could laugh together. We could travel together places. We could do business together. We could work together. Mm -hmm. We work. We still. We are still working together, and for both of us, it it was a big plus because we are both workaholics and we love to work. And being able to work together, it was a big plus. plus. Yeah. yeah. You you had a, another. Because bond. it's very hard to be uh, able to work with your partner. It is very hard, but it's also not recommended. Yeah. And it seems that you too found a way to do it. We just felt like it. Uh, it was something that we felt it came natural to us. Mm -hmm. um, I think we first worked very good together and then we had a beautiful life together, you know? So yeah. business came first and then the personal life came second. Maya, um, I remember very many years ago, I used to see you compete at a lot of dancing competitions, like all these beautiful ballroom dance competitions that, you know, when we were little, we used to see on Eurosport, probably it was the channel that had the worldwide competitions. And I was so blown away by the way you always danced. So how did you start dancing? What inspired you? Or... Oh my God, are we going there? <laughs> <laughs> I started to dance, I think, since I was in my mom's tummy. Uh, I'm sure of it because I, I was one year old, barely walking, and I was dancing. So I have, you know, videos of everything. Um, my parents remember everything with such love. Mm -hmm. They were obsessed with me. I was, you know, the heart of the party all the time. Everyone used to come to our house and begging me just to dance, dance and sing and dance and sing. And I was just like, you know, what am I? <laughs> but I loved, I, I, I'm still dancing in my dreams. I wow. swear, I still, you know, close my eyes and I feel the beat. I feel like dancing is part of my life. It will always be it's something that keeps me alive. I still dance in the house, but like nobody's watching me, but I still do it from time to time. I started dance classes when I was six and a half, I think, because I was dancing in the house all the time and I was very flexible. So um, my parents used to uh, put us in all these activities like uh, judo and, you know, taekwondo and dances and everything, tennis and mm -hmm. all these crazy activities. and then. 
they, they saw me dancing so well in the house and my mom thought, you know, maybe we should bring you to dance classes. Uh, I went to different dance classes, but they were not for me. I was getting bored. As I was, I was telling you, I get bored kind of easily. So I was getting bored because I could already do everything that, that they were doing in the dance classes. So then she said, okay, let's try ballroom dance. Mm -hmm. And I went to ballroom dance and it was something else. Uh, it was more challenging, it was harder to learn it. And then it challenged me and I wanted, I wanted to do it. I would do anything to just go to my dance classes. It was the only reason they could punish me. For example, if I did something wrong in school, if I did mm -hmm. something wrong in, you know, personal life, right. they would say, okay, if you ever going to do this, you will not go to your dance classes anymore. And I would be a saint. <laughs> I would do anything just to go to my dance classes, to my ballroom dance classes. And then I started to compete and then, you know, I, I was kind of good and so on. You were very good. You were not kind of good. You Thank were, you. You were, you were exceptional. I, I, I loved it. I just, I was, I was passionate about it. I you was see very how we go back it. to passion and discipline? Because yeah. this is all about and passion I was disciplined. and discipline. I was disciplined. I remember that our teacher was, you know, asking for our grades in school. And if you didn't have A plus or A, mm -hmm. I think you, you could, could have like two Bs in a year, but th that's about it. If you didn't have like good grades, you were not allowed to, to be in the competitions. Oh, wow. So I was also keeping my grades up because I wanted to go you to my to dance compete, classes. Of course, yeah. of course, because you had so much to give. Yeah. Wow. And I yeah. love the dresses and I, I love the work and the sweating and you know, mm -hmm. Yes, I was really passionate yeah. about it. But you know, this is like, I'm in the world of personal branding, right? So, you know, that they say that even if you know it, and even if you don't know it, you do have a personal brand. And I remember because we come from the same town, right? And yeah. everyone in town was about Maya, the dancer, you know, the dancer. So you were definitely identified with that. You were. I was, yeah. Yeah. I was because, it, you know, then it was a, a, a big deal, like mm -hmm. on the cover of some magazines, on the newspapers, you know, on the TV shows and stuff like that. In a small town is a big deal. So everyone knew your name, everyone thought they know who you are, and people talking about you, good and bad, and you know how it is. Um, but yeah, it, it, was, it was a very special period of, of my time, of my, mm -hmm. you know, of my life. And I, I love it. I, I still remember everything with such you know, I have beautiful memories. It was amazing for me. I loved every single piece of it. It definitely shaped you. I believe that such yeah. experience so intense um, would also, because you're always dancing with a partner and yeah. you also learn about partnership and competition in the same time. And that is very, very powerful. Um, but no, you know, I was just thinking, it's hard to compete when you are so young and to also learn how to deal, you know, with specific experiences from, from your life. Nowadays, you know, we're mature women and we're strong and powerful. Now we know how to deal with a lot of circumstances. But back then when you're 10 and you go in a competition and, you know, maybe you get the first place or you don't get the first place, like, how did you deal with that? You learn. You learn how to I never, I never said, I, I, I remember I used to go home and if I was not the first, I was maybe not the second, but I definitely was the third. Um, <laughs> a lot of times I was the first, but there are times when you're not the first because someone is just better than you. And I, I tell my kids all the time and I tell people around me, there will always be people who will be smarter than you more beautiful than you are, wealthier, whatever that is, don't compete with those people. Compete with yourself. You have to compete with yourself. If you go to a competition and you're not on the first place, it's your fault. It's nobody's fault. It's you have to congratulate the you know the first ones because they were great and they deserve the first place. Right. It's your fault. You have to try harder you have to work more to succeed 
that's it. You don't have to be bitter. You don't have to be frustrated. You don't have to be jealous. And that's something that I just learned myself and I didn't have it in me. You know, I never, I was never jealous on people. I was never frustrated that I, that I didn't win the first prize or stuff like that. I knew exactly that I have to work more and work smarter and, mm -hmm. you know, compete with my own self, try to be right. a better version of myself every single day. That makes a lot of sense, but it also brings my attention that that is who you are and that is how you used to deal with things. Yeah. But when you used to get first place, there were people that did not get the first place and there were people that didn't know how to deal with things the way you did. Yes, I think um, most people don't know how to deal with failure. They name it failure, I name it learn. You just learn from your failures. I don't see it like this. Like, I, I, if I don't succeed in something today, I don't see myself as I failed. Right. I see my, myself that I have to try more and I have to learn more because I, I'm not at that level today. Mm -hmm. I will be probably tomorrow or in one month or in 10 years. Right. And I will be there if I want to be there. Maybe I didn't want it enough. Maybe I was not prepared. Maybe I was not mature. There are a lot of things that I, maybe I did wrong, but that doesn't put me in the failure corner. You know, oh, you're, you're, you failed. Yeah. You, you're nothing. You didn't get the first place. Now you're like, you're done. No, it's just the beginning of everything. Like this has to push you more and you have to be more passionate about everything and you have right. to try more because a lot of things when you get the first place you settle mm -hmm. you think oh i'm, I'm the, the best, best. <laughs> i'm the best now it's time to get a vacation no now it's time to work more, more because there there are people behind you who are coming very fast oh man very fast with probably more focus than you ever had and they will go into, they're, they're going to take your place. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they're going to take your place. It's that... They're going to take theirs. You have to try always to be more. Of yourself. Of yourself. Of what you decide. Of your version of yourself. This is my, this is my view on it, on everything. I don't, I never saw myself as a failure, but a lot of people, you know, take it as... If I didn't get the first place, now I have to hate everyone around me. No, it's your fault. It's nobody's fault. Well, that is the easiest thing to do, right? Just blame yeah, just the outside do... world and it's you and it's you and it's you. And then you never really look at, oh, it's actually me. Yeah, maybe, yeah. you know, it, it comes from your, your, your soul. Mm -hmm. I think everyone is born with a certain karma. And people who are um, frustrated and uh, try to have to find the fault in everyone else but themselves, I think they're just born with this feeling. You don't think that it can be changed? Is there no hope? With work. With work. With everything yeah. is with work. Mm -hmm. You have to put work in absolutely everything. You want to change? Mm -hmm. Of course you can. You can do whatever you want. It's yes about everything, but you have to say yes to yourself. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if, you know, X, Y, Z are saying yes to you if you're saying no, no to, to yourself. yourself. It doesn't matter. Are you, li your life is made by those people? No. Um, why are you focusing your inner self on the outside world when you should focus yourself just on yourself and your inner self? I don't get it, but a lot of people do. Yeah, a lot well, of people it, do. It it's requires a lot of practice, and you know you got to have these certain experiences in your life with with right help and maybe mentors, and you know being yeah. being around the right people and just learning these things because these are not part of the educational system. We don't learn these things in school. You know? No, we don't. We we learn to compete we with the colleague next to you, and this is what we learn. You know, we always gotta be better than anyone else, and maybe only for better we're loved. But definitely, you made a strong point that that's not the case, and it's not how yeah. how it should work. I also think that's how hate is learned because you you're not born with hating hate. on any anyone. Oh, believe me, you 
No. Right. There, there's not... Hate is learned. Hate right. is learned in the family, it's learned in school, it's learned everywhere. You're not born hating on anyone. You don't know what hate is. You love everyone. Do you remember yeah. when you were a kid? You used to play with everyone. You just wanted kids around you. You, you, yeah. you had no idea who's that or who's this person. You just wanted to play and love everyone around you because love is teached and learned. Learned. And hate. Do you think hate learn. comes by default, though? Sometimes in certain experiences. I mean, just nowadays, you know, just looking on 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 internet. You see so much hate, so much hate online. People dragging people down at every corner, and I think it 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 always went like this. Like mm -hmm. hate is all over since the world started, but now they have they express themselves easier. It's easier to express yourself on Instagram, on, on Facebook, on Twitter, on whatever that is. Yeah. You have more platforms to express the hate. But still hate comes from within. Yeah. Don't search it without... Hate comes from within, as Buddha says. Um, it's definitely a personal problem and a personal struggle to be able to not hate on anyone. You can have a different opinion, mm -hmm. you can have a different personality, but that doesn't mean you have to hate. We are not on the same page, but that doesn't mean I hate you. Yeah. I don't like you as a person. I don't have anything in common with you. I don't want to spend my life with you or my time with you, but from that to hate, is a very big step. Long road. It's a long, long road. Yeah, I get that. I feel that. You can ignore whatever you don't like. Yes. You can just ignore it. Yes. I don't like this. I ignore yeah, it. I don't like you. It. Yeah. I can say hi, bye, and then I mean, ignore you. As you said, there's a big difference in between. Hey, I don't want you to be part of my life, but I love you and I wish you well and go in the world. I don't even have to best. love you. Yeah, maybe you don't even have to love you, yeah. but just go. But at least I don't hate you. Just I want you to be happy. Go be happy, but not in my life. Yeah. And yeah, it's a definitely a very. No, I really life. think that hate is something that is learned from early ages, uh, and probably it's something that we also have in ourselves, coming with our karma mm -hmm. from other lives or other experiences. Um, I I think it's also the first seven, seven, ten years of. Of, of our lives, right? Because, yeah, maybe you come, I mean, I, I don't know, but you bring it with you, but then it's definitely reinforced by the experiences that you have in the first years of your life. Or I had kids hate school. me when I was like five years old. I don't know how you can learn that at five. And they, 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 they just hated me. Yeah. For no reason. Just for for being myself, for just for, existing. For, for just being myself and probably existing. So, um, yeah, I think I, I think you come with that energy into this life. This is my opinion that there are people who just have hate in their soul. So and it's and so sad. It's sad, but maybe in other lives they can change it if they try. There is space in every single one of us for love and for hate, and it's a matter of choice. But being hated at five years old, there is a whole new level of hate. Mm -hmm. Oh, tell me. I know. <laughs> I, I know. I still, you know, yeah. It's hard. It's hard. It's definitely. hard and it's weird and you, you don't understand anything, you know, when you're five you just want to be happy and live your life, but kids are... Ooh. And also because they, those are your formative years as a child, you know, I mean you're forming yourself, your brain is evolving the most in the first three years of your life and then you know the other portion until you're seven or ten years old, so you're evolving the most. In, in, in those... You're like a sponge. Yeah, you're know? like a sponge. You, you learn everything, you want to experience everything, you, you want to do yeah. everything. It just takes me to think that, you know, if you're hated at such an early age, you know, if you're hated at, you know, you're five, six years old, 
it exists the possibility that if you don't work with yourself to go in the world defending because you know what happened to you and as an individual it is amazing when you actually do the work and you go in the world with everything that happened to you and you don't have to defend and then you're 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 love and you choose to be love and i'm like hey i'm here and i'm loving and i'm here and i'm loving and you're not defined by those experiences you know it's very hard to not be defined by, by those experiences um you learn how to give yourself out there into the world maybe 90 percent of time but being traumatized by so much hate and by so much negativity it you tend to defend yourself right maybe 10 percent maybe 15 percent maybe 50 percent sometimes it depends right. on the structure it depends on the people you are with I don't think it goes away. It didn't. For me, it didn't go away. I was hated since I was very young. It was very hard for me. It was very traumatic. Um, I had bad experience with people. Um, and I still try to learn how to deal with hate and how to deal with whatever I'm feeling and how to ignore certain things and still be myself and how to forget because you know they say this is an amazing thing that people have they they can forget things well i didn't so i don't know what they're talking about because there are a lot of things that i didn't forget um and i'm still working on definitely i think everything. this is a very long process for each and every one of us yeah. even though you went through so much since you were very little you seem to accomplish so much so definitely something has driven you all the way maybe from those experiences to be where you are today can you see a connection in between the early ages versus where you are now it's definitely a connection because, as I told you before, I never saw myself as a failure. Mm -hmm. um, I knew that I have to work harder. I knew I have to prove myself that I can do anything that I put my mind on. And also, I'll be honest, I wanted to prove my haters wrong. Because I went through a lot of things and people were really, really mad about everything that I was doing different than, you know, their personal lives and they were used to normal things and I was mm -hmm. always outside of the box, always doing other stuff, always, you know, putting one step further and I don't know why they felt that hate is the answer. They could, they could have just ignored me, but they didn't. So, but I learned from everything that I, I have myself in every situation. You don't, ha you don't have everyone. Like you think, oh, I have my family. They have my back, or I have my friends. No, when when things go down, your friends are not a, around, or your friends would will, will align with your enemies a lot of times oh wow that's that's hurtful that's mean it is but what can you do you just move on <laughs> you just move no. on and find the you know the strength in yourself because it's you yourself and you it's everything that you have your family is busy with adulting <laughs> um your friends are aligning with your enemies you have your grandma is, you know, focusing on praying or whatever she does. You have nobody. Like, it's you and yourself. And you have to figure it out because you don't want to be a failure. And you want to feel like a winner and you will feel like a winner. You just have to know that this is who I am. Today, everyone hates me. Uh, today, everyone has something bad to say about me. But I will succeed and I have myself. You are, you know... A lot of times I, I hear a lot of people, oh, I have this and I have that and I have this people and I have this person. And it stresses me out because I I know a lot of things and I, I know a lot of things that I should not know. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh my God, you don't have these people and your parents will 
unfortunately die someday you don't know about your husband or your family or whatever that is even your kids you don't know exactly so the only person that you have is yourself you are born with yourself in this body with this mind with your soul and you're going to die just you and yourself nobody else is going to die with you Hmm. so I knew this from a very young age that I have to trust myself and myself is everything that I have. So I have to find solution by, by myself. Did anyone told you back in the time that it's possible, that whatever you want to accomplish is possible or that's a conclusion that you arrived at? Nobody told me no. Um, even teachers in my school, they used to say, oh, you don't need this, this is stupid, you need to focus on math, you need to focus on whatever we are doing in school, dancing is stupid, uh, acting, this is not for you, nobody makes money from this. Even my family, like even, even my mom mm-hmm. used to say, you know, you need a real job. And you know how is in Eastern Europe, they think being a lawyer or a doctor or whatever, uh, it's a good thing to 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 have um, as a job, but everything else, arts related, is just you're not making money from it. You know, yeah. it's not a good it's not a good choice. You can do better. So okay, I was a lawyer. You know, I had my grades. Yeah. I could do it. I showed everyone I can do no, it. it. I I did it next. <laughs> I did it amazing. Next. Now I can do whatever I want to do, you know. I proved everyone. Okay, you wanted me to be a lawyer? Okay, okay. Okay. I'm I'm going to be a lawyer. Is this fine? Okay, Okay, now I can do whatever I want. (laughs) (laughs) To be a lawyer was something safe. Yeah. And even for your family, probably, they just want you to be safe and to, to be able to take care of yourself. It's just that you proved them that you could do it. You left it on the side and then you went for bigger things and probably yeah. now they're looking at you and they're like wow our lovely daughter what has she created yeah but i had to t- i had to tell myself and i still tell myself mm. every single day that i can do it um, a lot of people around me are very negative and they bring a lot of negative energy and it's not their fault this is the level you know yeah. uh, this is it's whatever they, they can do this is who they are yeah. um, Life is hard. Mm-hmm. You cannot say, "Oh, I'm flower power. I don't care about anything. I'm I, I live in the clouds." No, life is hard. But does it help you to be negative? Does does negativity bring something to the table? Does it help you somehow? If you wake up in the morning and you say, "Oh my God, I cannot do this." I fail on every level, every aspect of my life. I cannot do this, I cannot... Does this help you somehow to be more, you know, of whatever you want to be? No, it's not that it doesn't help you. Whatever you put out in the universe will come back to you and that will be your reality. It doesn't cost you anything to be positive or try. It's a struggle for everyone. I struggle too to be positive a lot of times because a lot of things are happening in my life and it's I have to be focused and I have to work on being positive. But it's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. And in time I saw that being positive brings me so much. So much. And I manifest so many things that I wanted in my life. But negativity doesn't bring me anything, anything, but takes everything from my plate. You nailed it. So you then why? It. Why be negative? Yeah. Just be positive. Oh, uh, the stock market is going down and I, you know, it ha- for me it has to go up. Well, can I do something about it? I already put my money in it. I'm just putting out there an example. example. I already have my money in it. If I think you know, negative about it, does it help me with anything? No. So then I'll just think, you know, everything will be fine. This will work out. You know, I, you have to put it out there in the universe. And this is with everything, everything you that you do. It. 
Yeah, you create. You have to create your reality and telling yourself on and on and on and on positive things will make your life positive. Do you have a set of positive affirmations that you do every day? I do, but whatever works for me, you know, whatever I'm focusing on that mo moment, it's usually I start with my, my family, my, my, my soul, you know, whatever brings me happiness, and then of course, wealth, because I do think wealth brings you happiness, you know, it helps, right. helps a lot yeah. with keeping the fire alive. If tomorrow I don't have, I will not have anything. I will be exactly the same person, because I have my my loved ones around me, and I I, I know for sure I can build something else. You know. You have the confidence that you can rebuild. I have the confidence that I can rebuild, and I have the confidence that if I cannot rebuild, I will still be happy. Mm -hmm. With less. I'm happy with less, I'm happy with more. Yeah. I was happy, you know, as a teenager and I didn't have mm -hmm. the same amount of money that I'm having today. I will be extremely happy if I will have more and I'm extremely happy now. Yeah. So I, I like money, but they don't define me. I have met a lot of people that, you know, I could say they're generating millions, but they're still poor. Yeah. And what's your view on that? that this is a different conversation. A lot of people are trying to fake, you know, their lives and their lifestyle and they're trying to make they they're trying to look wealthy but they're they're not. They're trying to hang with wealthy people instead of hanging with whoever makes them happy and that's another problem. I think you should just do whatever makes you happy. Don't try to look wealthy. Don't try to look happy. Don't try to look beautiful. Be. Be, be wealthy. Be, exactly. be happy. Be beautiful. Be soulful. Be passionate. Don't don't try to fake something that you're not because Sooner or later, everyone will just, they, they will know. They will know. Because the energy that's around you, it's more mm -hmm. powerful than whatever you, you're trying to say See. or whatever you're trying to do or whatever you're trying to show to the world. This is who you are. Just be who you are. There's yeah. no one exactly like you. Why would you try to try to be someone else when there is not one person in the whole universe? exactly like you just say this every single day when you wake up nobody ever was is or will, will be, be exactly like me in the whole universe and that's that's power massive. that's that's, massive. that's everything you need and then you feel like you don't need motivational speakers or i don't know what you be your own motivation in the morning i'm like i'm unique i can be whoever i want to be i'm everything i'm i'm energy i'm soul i'm an explosion in the universe wow i like that i'm an explosion you in are the universe. you are too yes we are and i own it and i love it and that's why yeah. i wake up very you know happy in the morning it doesn't cost anything to wake up in the morning and be positive. Nothing. It doesn't cost you a penny. It doesn't cost you a penny, but it costs you. But brings you so much, you know, brings so much into your life. When I started myself to do mirror work, I couldn't look at myself. And that was a few years back when I had such a hard time looking at myself and say, Claudia, you're doing this. Claudia, I love you, Claudia. You know, I had such a hard time. And that required a lot of practice, mm -hmm. a lot of conversations with a lot of people because I had to process whatever I had to process, you know, about myself. And I, I think that I'm lucky because I had access to people that guided me through those processes, mm -hmm. but most of the people probably don't have access to that. I don't know. Um, it helped me a lot, all the hate that I got from, a, from an early age. Um, it helped me love myself more. Um, it helped me turn to myself when I had mm -hmm. problems. Um, I deal with a, a lot of things and I had a lot of anxiety, you know. And at some point, even, you know, my, 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 my dad was working in another country. Uh, my mom was with us at, at the house and she, sometimes she didn't even believe me. When I, when I used to tell her stuff, like, you know, kids 
were doing like really crazy stuff to me and at, at, at the point that my mom couldn't believe that th this was yeah. true I, I used to go home and tell her about all the, the things that you know kids were doing to me and she was like no you I think you're making this up this cannot be true even the teachers like the teachers wouldn't believe me so then I had you know I had nobody and I had to turn to myself I knew the truth I knew who I was um, I knew my heart and I said okay so at this point I'm everything that I have so I have to turn to myself and that made me made me stronger definitely that made me stronger yeah I believe that but you understood about yourself that you were the answer yeah it was you it is it's still it's me still, it's still you it's, it's still, still me. me and it will be Forever. Whatever life will throw at you, it will still be you for yourself and me for myself and Definitely. for each and every one of us. That's that's the only answer. Yeah. You are part of twelve companies all over the world, across three or more continents, and you have your own own tea company that you're CEO and founder. But what is your vision as you go, you know, forward in in the world of being present for all these things? I definitely want to grow absolutely everything. I want to grow all my businesses. Uh, I want to grow my tea brand. I, I'm very passionate about it. I believe in it 100%. I wake up in the morning and I just think about all the things that I want to do with my brand, all the teas that I want to bring, all the flowers that I want to grow. Um, I think the world should go in this direction of natural, healthy, um, organic. I really think that we should focus more on taking care of our bodies and mm -hmm. not to leave more, but to have a, a more beautiful, um, natural, uh, healthier life. Right. Not to struggle. I don't want to, you know, it has to be a daily thing it has to be a daily reminder i should drink tea instead of soda right i should go to the gym or run instead of watching tv for five hours i really think this is you know something mm -hmm. that all people should do in the future focus more on themselves fo focus more on the soul focus more on health Mm -hmm. and whatever brings them true happiness because social media you know right. all these negative things in the world just drowns you it yeah. doesn't bring you anything positive so I really think we should focus more on this then with the other companies of course I want to create I create s stuff every single day in you know we are in food industry Food industry, pff, you can do a lot of things in food industry. We are starting new projects. Um, I have so many, many ideas with our walnut company, Transylvania Nuts. Um, it's amazing. We are still br um, branding everything. We are still building every single day. Um, real estate, you know, real estate is easier than, you know, all the, the other companies. Real estate is just, it's for fun. <laughs> real estate real estate is more fun, you know. Food industry, yeah. drinks and you know, whatever else we are doing, it's 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 hard hard work. Mm -hmm. Branding everything, uh creating new stuff every single day is challenging. It's challenging. It's but keeps us alive, keeps us going, you know. I I believe that. Well it just looking at everything you're creating, I definitely see it keeps you it keeps you alive. I think what I like the most, and I will take them one by one, what I like the most about your tea company is that you focus a lot on well-being and you focus a lot on the education. Yes. So as you go through your Instagram profile or on your website, you focus a lot of you having the moment with yourself. So whenever you are drinking my tea, you are going to probably feel this or this or this yeah. because you learn to give yourself the time in which you are, you know, drinking that very hot tea. So I like the education part of it because especially now in the pandemic, it is important for us to focus on our well-being. And I explain to people all the time, 
it doesn't mean if you take your time to be happy, mm -hmm. to focus on yourself. It doesn't mean you're self-centered. Self-centered, it's something else. If you're not happy with yourself, if you're not healthy, you can, cannot bring happiness to other people in your life. Right. If you feel growth, yeah. you know, if your own life is a mess, you cannot bring anything to the table. Sure. So you first have to take care of yourself, take, have to take your moments, have to take care of your health, your personal life, your businesses, whatever makes you happy, and then try to give out in the, in the world, in the, in world. the universe. You know, you start with you. You have to start with you and then spread everything out there yeah, in the yeah, universe. Yeah. And so, we have scientific things about it. It's the Maslow of Pyramid course. and it really shows you that you cannot expand and you cannot spread it out of if you don't have the very of course. starting physiological needs up to everything that else is creating. Also, my first question as a kid was why? Why was my question every single day for, you know, mm -hmm. thousands of times a day? Why? That's why I want people to know why. Why do I have to drink tea? Why is this flower good for me? Why is, you know, this green tea, black tea, white tea, whatever that is, good for me? Why is mm -hmm. meditation good for me? Right. Why is manifestation good for me? Why do I have to do this? Why do I have to think like this? Why do I have to be powerful? Why do I have to listen more than I talk? Why? And a lot of whys. Everything is linked to the why Definitely. that I used to ask when I was a kid. So that's how I wanted to um, expand and build my brand with the why, answering the whys of the people in the world. I see at Transylvania Labs you have new products that are as well very special created also by you. And is there something that you want to bring forward about it? I know that they're very, very healthy. They're extremely healthy and this is a project that I'm very happy about because um, I, 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 I try to go to the gym, you know, mm -hmm. I, I try to go to the gym three, four times a week and then I, I used to eat all this protein bars, but then a lot of protein, protein bars have a lot of bad things in them and, you know, not many calories, but then other ease and a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of bad things in them and we, we have the nuts and everything and I said look I want to create some bars that I can eat but then also my kids can eat because a lot of times you know you have the bars in the house and then you have kids in the house and they're asking oh mommy what are you eating there like I want to try it and then you look on the label and you're like no mm -hmm. I have to throw this away because my kids cannot eat this yeah. and I said I want something that helps me mm -hmm. with my health journey with my fitness journey, but then I want something to suit my kids as well, mm -hmm. you know, to be perfect for my kids. And I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm just, I'm eating nine bars a day, uh, no sugar, no, you know, no artificial anything, no, co no coloring, no nothing, just nuts and dried fruit. They're amazing, so healthy. You get all the nutrients and all the vitamins from them. It's I, I, I love it. Sounds I love. like perfection. I, it, it is perfection and it tastes amazing because that's another part. I used to not be able to eat all these protein bars because of the taste. They have like an aftertaste and mm -hmm. the crunch is not there and you know, right. they're not gummy enough, they're too dry. They're Oh my God. So you have created your own bar that is perfect from all perspective in, yeah. in, in your view. And my husband and I, of course. of course, he's a doctor of in food course. industry and wow. yeah, okay. we, we, yeah. I, I told him whatever I want, whatever I like and he's the master of creating food. He's a doctor in food industry, he knows everything, everything. He's a, a master in this. I love, it's, it's a process. I it's love a process. the process, I love his brain. He's, it's, it's amazing just to, to, to be there and for you to say, oh, I want this, this, this and that. And someone will say, well, that's not possible, you know. Yeah. You cannot taste good, look good, be healthy, uh, suit kids, blah, 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 all this the crazy stuff. And he says, I don't know how I will do it, but I will, I will do, do it. it. Definitely. And you're like, oh, he's my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I, my guy. I what is your advice 
for the young ladies that are starting their own journeys because you have started very early at very young age being a blonde beautiful woman and just give us some love tell us tell us things maybe it sounds like a cliche but don't let anyone tell you no and or let them tell you no but don't accept that no for yourself as an answer mm -hmm. uh, don't put that no in your brain and stop yourself from trying never stop trying a lot of businesses are not succeeding you fail you try again you fail you try again and this has to be the reason in life you fail you fail you fail or you you don't fail you're not succeeding or you're not doing right. whatever you think you should do yeah. at a certain age mm -hmm. but you still try every single day again and again and again and one harder. day you will succeed Definitely. just you know try to learn more try to focus more try to put on paper whatever you're doing to see you know in time you will see uh what you're doing uh good what you're what what's wrong but never take no for an answer if it's not today if it's not in one month in 10 years but one day you will succeed and then don't let haters bring you down don't let haters, people who are frustrated frustrated with their own lives, with their own struggles, tell you who you are. You look at yourself in the mirror, you look in your, your soul, you know who you are. You were born like this, nobody can ever tell you, oh, you're this. No, they can see their perspective. They can show you who they are, you know? Mm -hmm. By looking at you, they would probably describe whatever they have in your soul. Nobody can know what you think. They can know what you say. Mm -hmm. Nobody can know what you feel. They can just see what you're acting like or what, what you're showing them. It's mm -hmm. you yourself. You, and I'm, I, I will keep on saying this all over again, it's you yourself. Nobody knows who you are, what you think, what you love. Mm -hmm you bring the energy on the table so focus Definitely. on yourself don't take no for an answer and keep on trying until you will succeed success it's defined by yourself yes success yes. is not defined by people around you society whatever your mom thinks it's successful for you maybe it's nothing you right. you will probably not wake up in the morning to do whatever your mom thinks it's successful or any anyone else. Or other people. I was just, yeah. you know, giving an example yeah. because, you know, it's your family and usually you you're very, yeah, yeah. You, you care about whatever your family is thinking. Yeah. But you are different people with different personalities and different brains and different souls and different everything. So you know exactly what's successful for you and just mm -hmm. believe in yourself no matter what. Totally. If you, if you stand against the whole world, you're enough. You yourself, it's it's enough. And when does it come in the game, the collaboration part? It's you yourself to always be yourself and center with yourself and knowing who you are and where you're going and why you're going. But then at some point, you know, as you met your husband, for example, it existed a collaboration part. Yes, and you have to collaborate with a lot of people in the world. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that you lose yourself. Definitely. You can give your knowledge, you can give whatever you learn, whatever you know, whatever you feel, whatever you want to give, you can give to other people and of course collaborate with people around you, but that doesn't mean that you give yourself up. Right. And that doesn't mean that you you're you don't concentrate on yourself still. Mm -hmm. It's still you yourself and collaborating with other people. Right. But you give what you want to give. And still, if everything breaks down or there's a bomb and everything is exploding, you can you have one person to turn back to, and that's so, yourself. You know, you never lose when you focus on yourself. No, you know, and I also focus on everyone around me. I focus on my kids, I focus on my husband, I focus on everything that I have to do. 
but I start with myself because if I don't start with myself, I cannot focus on anything and anyone because I will lack a lot of self-confidence, a lot of, I will not be happy. And if mm -hmm. I'm not happy, you know how it is. If mama's not happy, kids are not happy. Yeah, happy. Happy wife, happy life. Everything starts <laughs> with, you know, the person who is giving the love and taking care of everyone around. But they all have to start with the center of love. That's yourself. It took me a lot of time to, to understand, you know. But a lot of times when you're not happy and you're frustrated and you feel, you know, resentful and hateful maybe and a lot of things, you just have to turn back to yourself. Like other people would say, turn back to God. Well, I respect all religions in the universe and all people, but what is God? What is God? God is in yourself, right? To reach in every one of us. Because you're trying to search God in church, in temples, in the sky, in everywhere. You're trying to reach and to find Him. But what God says in the Bible, in everything, even Buddha tells you because Buddha is not a God. Mm -hmm. Every, you know, in, in God itself, and the universe tells you, God is in you, is within you. Don't search it in places. Don't search, search it, it in material stuff. Don't search it out there in the world. Search it inside, because it's there. Whatever you, you call it God, you call it universe, whatever you call it, you call it Allah, whatever you call it, is inside. Right. So that's the reason why you have to turn to yourself, to yourself. Because, because even God is in there. Maya, um, can you leave us on a positive note, please? This is positive, but leave us, leave us with a positive message as this conversation unfortunately is coming to an end. <laughs> we could talk <laughs> forever. I think we would never ever finish our discussions about stuff. Yeah. I think everything about me is positive. Um, I don't have to finish on a positive note because I am positive. That's beautiful. I am working on being positive, you mm -hmm. know, um, every single day. And I think every single one of us should try every day to reach the best version they can be. Um, it's hard sometimes, but at the most end of the, of the day, times. most of the times, um, it's hard, it's a struggle, but it's worth it. And it's, it's worth manifesting. Just think about all the things that you want. Everything is possible. I'm telling you, everything is possible. And I tell that to my husband all the time because he has a lot of companies and he's managing everything and he's a great guy, God bless him. But sometimes he struggles with being, you know, positive all the time because it's very hard when you have so many so struggles things. and so many things going on. It's very hard to stay positive nonstop. Okay. I struggle too with less worries than he has. <laughs> but I still try to keep the balance in the family. And I say, you know, it doesn't cost us absolutely anything to wake up in the morning and instead of swearing or instead of thinking something negative just think something positive right if it comes to you or it doesn't come to you it doesn't matter it, it yeah. doesn't matter when you think about it just think about something positive wake up in the morning think about positive make this an exercise every single day and i promise you your life will change it will get way better i believe that i do believe i believe that. if i you know if i can manifest if I, I did, I, I manifested a lot of things in my life. I think everything. Mm -hmm. I don't think in, I, I don't believe in coincidences right. at all. So I, I really think that everything that I got in life, I manifest. So if I can do it, I, everyone can do it. Everyone and anyone can do it. I'm, that, that's for sure. 
Maya, thank you so very much for thank being you. present. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. It was my pleasure and my honor, really, and I really hope that we will get to have a second interview and a third interview whenever, you know, we will meet well, again in this world. So, it was you my just, pleasure. You just manifested it, so... Oh, thank you! It will happen, I'm sure it will happen. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Now, Maya and I would love to hear from you. What are the most impactful things that you have heard in this conversation? What are you going to apply in your life? Go over to my website and make your comments there. And remember, stay on your roller coaster until the ride ends, because great things need time to manifest. So be patient with yourself. Thank you.